50,000 fans at Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge as Alabama comes to town. Let's take a look at the SEC West standings. You see Alabama on top, undefeated. LSU's one defeat came at the hands of Florida, and that's uh, A&M next, followed by Mississippi State. The current BCS standings, Alabama on top, Kansas State second, Notre Dame currently third, followed by Oregon, and there in fifth place is Louisiana State University. Good evening, everybody. Vern Lundquist along with Gary Danielson. Glad to have you along for this one. This is the third time these two teams have met in the last year. Last November in Tuscaloosa, LSU wins. Last January in the BCS championship game, Alabama wins. And that brings us to tonight and this fight for supremacy in the West. And Gary, this Alabama team, top ranked almost unanimously most of the year. We've grown to know a lot of their stars over the year, but this year he occupies a different position. He really does. When you think about Alabama, you usually first point to their defense or running back. But this year, the star of the football team is A.J. McCarron. He has gone from that loss last year against LSU and built a resume that I think he's in the hunt for the Heisman and possible back-to-back -back national championships. He's having an outstanding magical year for Alabama. But we know Alabama, and we know a Nick Saban team is built around defense, and this defense is no different. They're built along three different levels. On the defensive line, Jesse Williams is a star. C.J. Mosley is one of those great linebackers that Nick Saban always has, and they got a shutdown corner. D. Milner is another guy that can go down and take any receiver out of the football game. Same old Alabama. The late Beano Cook said, Dracula and LSU football are best at night. This is a formidable venue. Death Stadium, uh, the, the Tiger Stadium in Death Valley, 36 and one under Les Miles here, and they've got a pretty good defense. Well, they really do. I think there's two elite defenses on the field tonight, and LSU is elite because of their stars at defensive end. Kiki Mingo, he is a beast on a pass rush, and Sam Montgomery on the other side is maybe better or maybe slightly worse. We don't know. They're both about the same. This year, Kevin Minner, though, is making a statement as a middle linebacker. He's as good as there is in college football. But we know against Alabama, and LSU has proved this in the past, that you need more than a running game. Zach Mettenberger must come through, Vern. He has to play better than he does, or I don't see how they can win the game. And so these 92,000-plus have been in place for the better part of an hour and a half. And here comes LSU and their head coach, Les Miles. Defending national champions, top ranked every poll in the BCS standings. Their head coach, Nick Saban, who labored in this vineyard for four years. LSU, Alabama, kick is next. The sun will soon find its home in the western sky, and it will be Saturday night in Death Valley. This day is about dominating an opponent. This day is about being an issue. This is Death Valley. This is truly a place where opponents' dreams come to die.
They've been playing night football at Tiger Stadium for the last 82 years. And LSU has established a formidable record here, helped in no small measure by fans who define the term ardent. We welcome you to the Home Depot SEC on CBS. Alabama, LSU, and moments ago, Tracy Wolfson with Nick Saban. Don't you know Death Valley at night well and the challenges it presents. So how important is it for your team to handle this environment? Well, I think we got to play a good game from start to finish. I mean, we got to start fast. we got to finish strong. It's going to be a 60-minute game. And, you know, the, the real honor of being a great competitor is being able to deliver when your best is needed. And we need our best out of every player on the team. Thanks a lot. Good luck. Thank you. All right, Nick Saban, who was here and himself posted a 27 and 3 record while he was the head coach at LSU from 2000 to 2004. How about the current head coach at LSU? Les Miles is with Tracy. So there's a lot of doubters out there. So, what does your team need to do to prove themselves tonight? Just play like we play. This is a, uh, a charged environment. Our football team will play to that tonight. Very quality opponent. We'll be challenged. We'll see if we can meet that challenge. We haven't seen the Mad Hatter this year. Is there any tricks underneath that cap? I've been here every every week. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> Vern? All right, Trace, thank you. Alabama won the toss and deferred. The road team, how about that? 10 and 6 in the last 16 meetings. And as we mentioned at the top of the telecast, one and one in November and January of last year. Alabama will kick off to the Tigers. It'll be Cade Foster, number 43. Almost half of his kickoffs have been for touchbacks. Now keep in mind, of course, you know by now that the kickoff yard line moved up to the 35 this year. Michael Ford, number 42. Jarvis Landry are the deep men. This one is underway, and it'll be Ford letting it go through the end zone. Touchback, and it will come out to the 25-yard line. And it's time now to introduce the Chick-fil-A starting lineups. And we begin with a man on the spot, Gary, Zach Mettenberger. Unlimited talent, Vern. When you watch the guy throw, you wonder how he can produce the stats he's producing. He has an arm as good as anybody in college football. When will we see it? We've not seen it particularly in conference games. Jeremy Hill, who has over 100 yards, the true freshman in each of the last two games, gets the nod as the starting tailback. Hand off right side. Plunges out across the 30. Gets to the 31 tackled by Adrian Hubbard. Let's complete the lineups and introduce you to the LSU offense. DeRozic, Collins, Lonergan, Trey Turner, and Alexander, freshman on the right side. James Wright, come on. They go with a quick huddle. Kadrin Boone, at number 86. Well, one of the things you try to do is get a struggling quarterback off the mark early in a football game. A quick, easy slant. It's always fun to go one for one, two for two, three for three early in the game. Feels like you have money in the bank. Here's the toss. And in the backfield, Jeremy Hill avoids the tackle, tries to hurdle. And is knocked out of bounds after a modest game. Yeah, I think this was a corner blitz this time, and he ran right through a tackle by from the outside by D. Milner, and then hurdles at the end of it. Gain of two, second down eight. Jeremy Hill, 124 yards two games ago, and he topped that with 127. In the last game, they had an open week last week. Here's Hill again. And he gets out near the 47-yard line. Hubbard makes it. Alabama's defense, number one in six categories. Not in the SEC, but in the country. Stinson Williams Square, Hubbard Mosley, and Johnson, along with Xavier Dixon in the secondary. Blue, Lester, Clinton Dix, and the All-American candidate, D. Milner. Third down and four. 
It's the first play actually for C.J. Mosley in the game. He does not play against the regular offense, only nickel. We won't see him as much. Four wides, third down, four. Four-man rush, stunts in the middle, and the pass is complete. Cadron Boone's second catch. What a positive start for LSU. It was because Adrian Hubbard put pressure on Mettenberger, but a short throw to the outside, good against good. But inside, Adrian Hubbard really beat the blitz inside and took down the quarterback. Nice job by Mettenberger stepping into the throw and the rush. Good sign for LSU. Jeremy Hill back in. This time, gang tackled at the 46-yard line. Let me tell you something I think is a good strategy technique so far early in this game for LSU. Besides getting the quarterback on the short pass, they're using a lot of quick counts, coming up to the line of scrimmage and snapping it. They're going to try to force Alabama to show their coverage is a little bit better and earlier in the snap count. Nobody hides coverage is better than Alabama. Gain of one last play, second down, nine. Two wides to the left. Play action, Mettenberger looks left the whole way. Got a little hook pattern. Yeah, he slipped. Odell Beckham slipped on the cut. Yes. And that's been a little bit of a story for LSU. Some of it is pass protection. Some of it is SEC defenses. And some of it is receivers that aren't coming up with the plays. That's one where you expect your guy, if you're going to knock off the number one team in the country, you know, slipping on your home field and not coming up with that one, that would have been a first down. And a third down nine. You see LSU is 10th in the SEC on third down and eight or more. Out of the spread, two wide to the left, one wide right. Are they blitzing? Yes, they are. Good protection. Into the corner it goes. Double coverage, and it's incomplete overthrown. Beckham, the intended receiver again, fourth down. It's been one of the scouting reports against Zach is that on the deep balls, he's been overthrowing them. It really was one-on-one -on -one coverage with the free safety, Lester running over with the ball in the air. This ball needs to be thrown a little wider. Look, at Lester's in the middle. He reads the ball flight. Beckham is saying, give me a chance for it. He had no chance. And so Brad Wing is on to punt. Cyrus Jones, the deep man, Wing, who was a star in this regular season game last year. The Australian, who had a brilliant night in that 9-6 overtime win for LSU. Alabama takes over at its own 10-yard line. You recognize that fellow. Not him, perhaps. Les Miles, eighth year, won national championship here at LSU. And a moment ago, a chance to chat with his wide receiver, Odell Beckham. Yeah, he's the number one receiver this year. There's no Reuben Randall. He must come through. And Les right away says, all right, we're with you. We're going to throw it to you again. You're going to get the next one. And the Chick-fil-A starting lineups. And we lead off with a Heisman candidate, I think fair to say, A.J. McCarron. You know, sometimes it's harder to play when you don't throw a lot. He is asked not to make mistakes and still make big plays. It's easier to throw the ball 30 times than 20 times. In the BCS championship game, they started throwing from the first play. Sure did. Let's see what they've got in mind at their own 10. If they keep it conservative, no. Little pass out on the right side and they spin move. That's Christian Jones, number 22. Well, the first play, when we talked to defensive coordinator John Chavis, and Vern, you and I were talking about this when we were watching, I was watching tape and telling you, it started right from the first play. A little dump pass to Smelly, and that was the game plan of the passes that Alabama threw, nothing in the middle of the field. A lot of dinks and dunks. Eddie Lacy is the starting running back. McCarron is under center. His streak of consecutive passes without an interception now at 263. Play action, McCarron. Good downfield coverage. Will he throw it away? Yes, indeed, he will. Let's set the offense now for you. 
For the Crimson Tide, Quanjo, Warmack, Jones, Steen, and Fluker, one of the better offensive lines in the country. Amari Cooper has emerged as a real threat. Michael Williams has been one. You'll see Lacey, and he'll share that backfield spot. Norwood and Christian Jones. Interesting call here for Alabama, Vern, all right? Third and short, is it considered a passing down or a running down? It's gonna say a lot. Barrett Jones looks back at his quarterback. Michael Williams tight to the right. Blitz threatened, blitz coming. Good protection. Incomplete at the 21 intended for Michael Williams. And guess who? Kevin Minner is a star. We talked to the offensive defensive coordinator, John Chavis, the longtime SEC coordinator, years at Tennessee, and now has rebuilt the defense here at LSU. And he said on this crossing route here that my guy is the best I've ever had in middle linebacker. That brings on Corey Mandel, just under a 42-yard average. Odell Beckham Jr. is back to return it. And in all likelihood, LSU is going to come out of this circumstance with good field position. Mandel will return it. He's popped, breaks the tackle. Heads back to the left, flag is down at the 43-yard line. As things now stand, the 46-yard punt and 12 on the return. Our referee tonight is Hubert Owens. You know, when you look at the two coaches, Vern, Nick Saban, Les Miles. Nick, you think in a big game, preaches process. Don't look at the scoreboard, make adjustments. Return. Illegal block of the back of the receiving team, number 32. That penalty is 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. You look at the push left side. Pretty clear. And I think a good call. And you know, the contrast with Les, I think in a big game, you know what he stresses? Tighten your chin straps. <laughs> That's how we're going to win. Kevin Minter with the big early defensive play. And we'll be right back. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Allstate. Direct TV. Coca-Cola Zero. And by AT&T. As I think you can tell, it is a gorgeous early November evening. Kirby Smart, defensive coordinator, Alabama. Yeah, one of the great coaches in college football. I talked to him on the field about the crowd noise. I said, does it bother you? And he said, actually, no. Playing on the road, the home crowd is more polite to the offense. And because we signal a lot, it's actually easier for us on the road than it is at home. J.C. Copeland and Jeremy Hill are in the I formation. On first down 10 behind the quarterback, Zach Mettenberger. He'll throw again. Deep. Oh, it's dropped again. Wow, Kadron Boone this time. Well, D. Milner thought he had this. He thought he had it picked off. He was in his trail technique. LSU is going to challenge this bump and run that Alabama's using at the line of scrimmage. Milner's right there, goes back and looks for the ball and misjudges it. And Boone could have came up two drops in the game already. Already. And we played less than five minutes. Russell Shepard is in the backfield now, number 10. Three wides to the left side. Shepard comes right, squirts through. Stiff arm, 45-yard line. What a nice run. Gain of 19. Well, this is a surprising game because the zone read with Mettenberger at quarterback, Alabama doesn't believe he's going to keep it. It's just a running play. Good blocking inside. Trey Turner, the freshman, and Vidal Alexander, the freshman, running right behind those two big young players. Play fake. Got it. Big hit right 
across the middle on Jarvis Landry, number 80, but he did hold on. Well, you can see the different game plan that LSU is utilizing in this game than from the national championship. They kept it more run-oriented, more power-oriented. In this game, they're going to give the credit due to Alabama, and they are loosening the ball game up. Now Michael Ford is in the backfield, number 42. They use a quartet of backs, and they don't have Alfred Blue, who started the season as the starter. Around the corner, Ford. And, of course, they've also had uh, real problems in the offensive line because of injury. This was the intended, well, this was the starting line of Falk, Collins, Lonergan, Wilford, and Hurst. That was against North Texas. Tonight, DeRozic, Collins, Lonergan, two freshmen on the right side, Trey Turner, who's been nicknamed Bull, and Vidal Alexander, who's been nicknamed Dozer. Well, they've run behind them twice already. That was the training staff that came up with that. You can see what the more wide open passing game, even though you were having some drops, has meant for the running game. Yeah. They're not beating their head against the wall. Very close. First down. A big win for LSU. They crossed the 50-yard line. That's Remember, in the championship game, it was well into the fourth quarter. It was very frustrating watching their tape of the national championship game, and I'm sure these guys for LSU had to watch it. But they're improving with uh, Bull and Dozer in there, right? Well, certainly the early returns on Bull and Dozer are <laughs> positive. Jeremy Hill back in. He's the true freshman. He's got a big hole left side to the 35-yard line. That might be enough to move the chain again. This is power football. This is cinch the chin strap. That time, J.C. Copeland took on middle guard Jesse Williams. Not only did he get hit by the center, Lonergan, and then Big Copeland. They'll try it on the ground again. This is an LSU offense that has struggled through much of the season. And now a little chippiness after the contact is made. And an Alabama defense against the run, number one in the country. They're yielding 57 yards per game. Already LSU has 50 yards on the ground. Spencer Ware is the running back now. Yeah, they had the play clock running down. They had to take a timeout. Were they going to reset it? They did reset it. Yep. Yes. Second down. Test the middle again. Spencer Ware. Spencer Ware. Number 11 inside the 30. We talked about C.J. Mosley being one of their outstanding linebackers and really the quarterback of the Alabama defense. But when LSU plays power, two-back run game, Nico Johnson and Trey DePriest is the two linebackers, 33 and 35, and C.J. Mosley is on the sideline. Third down has been a problem down for LSU. Let's see if they can strike up something. Especially against Alabama, the last two games third down right side successful yes wow. indeed Spencer Ware and they go over those two freshmen well when you turn on a tape and think about getting beat in the national championship game since last January and then you get an opportunity to get it it's not really a mulligan because they did lose the national championship but you get a chance to take them on again you can see that LSU wants to prove that they've got an offense as well as a defense six first downs for LSU 
Odell Beckham breaks and goes wide to the left side top of the screen. And it's where the running back again. They'll go left side. Whistles, I think. Yeah, timeout. Yeah, timeout call. Looks like it might have come from the bench. For the snap. Timeout. LSU. Time comes with 7.13 to go. Opening quarter. No score. We're back in Baton Rouge after the loss to Alabama in the championship game. Les Miles, kind of an unusual tactic. For more on that, let's go down to Tracy Wolfson outside the huddle. Well, Vern, he provided some extra motivation this year by having the words number two nationally engraved on their SEC championship rings. When asked why he did it, he said, because we couldn't write number one. You can bet this did not sit well with a lot of the players. You, you see number two, you're, you're the champions of your conference, but you see number two, and then it's it's uh, it's a shock. And, and so um, now looking back at it, and, and in the week that we're in right now, and the game we have ahead of us, it's, uh, it's motivating. You guys can bet that these players looked at their rings several times this week, guys. Yeah, but not on their fingers. A lot of them have chosen not to wear them. First down, 10. It's Hill being chased and caught from behind by Dion Blue, the junior college transfer in his first year. I'll tell you, that's an impressive bounce right there by Hill. This play is bottled up inside by Alabama, and Hill shows why this true freshman has to be on the field. He has the quicks to get outside. It's tough to get outside this Alabama defense like that. Now Spencer Ware back on the field, second down and six. This is the tenth play of this drive. LSU has dominated the football game so far. Absolutely. Jarvis Landry comes in the slot to the right side. Mettenberger, watch out from behind. Incomplete. Hey, had him. Yeah. I don't know if the rush kind of threw him off balance on the play and forced the ball high. Let's take a peek. Yeah, kind of a spin by Milner got him off balance and made the ball sail a bit high because that was an easy pitch and catch. Could have been another first down. Instead, it's a third down and six. Remember last time at third and five, they just ran the ball off tackle. They'll get a first down. Two wides to the right. Motion now from the receiver across the offensive line. Mettenberger rolling. Puts it up, incomplete. Well, you don't have, excuse me, Vern, you don't really have a lot of time because it looks like Kirby Smart's strategy has been to bring an extra guy on every play. This time, C.J. Mosley is forcing Mettenberger to throw it a little early. It would not have been a first down even if it was completed. That's going to bring on Drew Aleman, who is seven, uh, 12 of 17 this year. 16 of 18 a year ago, including the game winner in overtime that gave LSU a 9-6 victory. This one gives LSU an early lead. Looks familiar, doesn't it, for this game? Yeah, it does. <laughs> Field goal fans, stand at attention. 3-0 midway through the first. We'll be right back. Doubleheader tomorrow, the NFL on CBS. Lead game early, Denver at Cincinnati. Three others along at that same time. And the late game at 425, Pittsburgh at the Giants. That game is on schedule. CBS, the home of Super Bowl 47. It all begins with JB and the gang. 12 noon Eastern, the NFL Today, presented by Southwest Airlines. 3-0. Alabama has trailed for 15 seconds this season. Ole Miss went on top, and on the subsequent kickoff, Christian Jones returned it 99 yards to reestablish Alabama's lead. So we'll see how long this lead lasts. 
More than the lead, though. LSU 19 plays, Alabama 3. Yeah. That is what has to be the stat that LSU loves. Getting first downs and keeping Alabama's offense off the field. Here's James Hairston's kickoff. Very short and a fair catch called. And a flag because I think he moved. No. Let's say no. No, the big. I think and it was confetti. Yeah, it was. The premature confetti. <laughs> And let's uh, introduce you to the LSU defense. Mingo Johnson, Josh Downs actually is in there now. Logan and Montgomery, the front four. Lewis, Minter, Lamine Barrow, the uh, linebackers, and in the secondary, Mills, Lawson, Eric Reed, and Therald Simon. Only the fourth play on offense for Alabama. Lacey spins. Boy, does he spin he a lot. lot. Yep, yep, that's his trademark. Lacey. Last year as the backup to Trent Richardson, he would come in even in the championship game, had two back-to-back -back runs, and he just did the same scouting report. He sets you up and loves to spin. Watch it right here. Boom. Runs away from Barrow on that one. Second down. Minter is very aggressive. Alabama loves to run play action crossing routes behind him. They'll give it this time. Lacey comes left, slips into the secondary, and has the first Alabama first down of the ball. And it was Kevin Minter who made the tackle. Well, when Kevin Minter is going to make tackles, He's going to have to do it with help from his defensive line because they have to keep that Alabama offensive line and Barrett Jones right there who gets a piece of them, but you can see how quick Minter gets off the block and makes the tackle. Minter had 20 tackles in the loss at Florida, one off the all-time LSU school record. He's got 41 tackles in the last three games. Number 46 in white. There's McCarron the with play action. He's got a man wide open. Yep. It's Cooper, and he overthrows him by five yards. Oh, dear. He also had Michael Williams open behind the linebackers, and he obviously he had the post for a touchdown. The aggressiveness of the Alabama offense against the aggressiveness of LSU. You can see how open that that could have been a touchdown, but everybody's got a little juices flowing in this football yeah. game. Yeah. McCarron missed a couple in the first game. He didn't miss any in the national championship game. Lacey. All the way inside the 40 of LSU, Eddie Lacy, a 28-yard gain. And this might have even been a bust by LSU. Nobody blocks Sam Montgomery. Watch this. No one blocks the point of attack. And they run right by Montgomery. Inside, Benny Logan beats the block, too. But Lacy, running to daylight, makes a big play. Don't block two key players and gash them. Lawson finally caught up with him, but it's a gain of 28 and a first down. Kevin Norwood, top of the screen. Play action, McCarron. Looks deep. Man-for-man -man coverage, and this one will be incomplete, and a flag is going to no, be thrown. Boy. Could be offense. I, I don't know. No? I'm not sure about that. Norwood and Jalen Mills. Let's see what the call is. Offensive pass interference. Yeah, yeah. Number Good call. Oh, shit. They know who it is. The offensive pass interference, 15 yeah, from yeah. the previous spot. Yeah. You want that? Do they want it? Boy, right at the end, you called it. Jalen Mills, good Offense. coverage. And Alabama makes the call. Spot. Nick Saban would like an explanation. It was a bit ticky-tacky for me, I have to be honest. I thought it was good coverage. Both guys fighting.
fighting for the ball. A little tug on the jersey right at the end. In bump and run coverage, that's what you're going to say. And he's saying, I got the arm bar all the way down the field. And both of these coaches will work the officials throughout the whole game. After the call, first down 25. Back across the midfield stripe at the 46. And it off to Lacey, who poor tackling defensively again by LSU. I tell you, he's a man, though. And let's talk about the last piece of this great Alabama team that we haven't addressed yet, this offensive line. When you move a two-time All-American, first at guard, then at tackle into center, Barrett Jones. Chance Warmack might be a first-round draft pick. D.J. Fluker, a two-year starter. And Cyrus Quanjo at number 71 at left tackle. They're as good as there is in college football. Second down, 16. A lot of time. Almost intercepted off the deflection. Kevin Minter diving for it. Third and 16. Again, what Alabama likes to do is throw, the, throw those short crossing routes from the pocket and the deeper crossing routes in play action passes. Minter has great speed and maybe not as good a hand. McCarron is off to a slow start. One of five for the Alabama quarterback. Let's see if Mingo and Montgomery can make an impact now. This is where they want to be, third and long. Alabama loves to screen in this situation. We're going to get the call in the backfield. This is Christian Jones, but this, in all likelihood, will be for naught. I think D.J. Fluker, the right tackle, might have... Uh, Interesting call here for Les Miles. Yeah. It'll be fourth and ten. A little bit too far for a field goal. Does he take it or make it fourth down? It'd be third and 31 or 35, I guess, if they take the penalty. Holding. Offense. Number 76. That penalty is declined. Fourth Thought they might do that. I don't think they're in field goal range. And you don't want to get a pass interference and give Alabama the ball again. D.J. Fluker right at the end of this play. Yep, takedown. You can see it right in the middle of the field of the play right there. Nick Saban, decent drive, but no points. And so Mandel is on to punt on fourth and ten. Odell Beckham Jr. waits at the ten-yard line. Executed very well. End no. over end. You're wanting that to be five yard line, eight yard line, and that went right into the end zone. Got a couple of slaps on the head by the Crimson Tide players now. Monday, two broke girls meet Cedric the Entertainer. Catch a new episode of the hit comedy Monday only. CBS. Vern, Alabama doesn't lose a lot, obviously. Okay, they've only lost five games in the SEC since 2008 when they lost to Florida. But there is a formula. When they do lose, the team rushes the ball. They don't throw the ball. The optimal passing is about 20 pass attempts. That's optimal if you want to beat Alabama. You don't beat them by being pass out. And it's kind of what we've seen LSU employ so far. Here's Hill. Out to the 22-yard line. And let's go back to the studio for a John Hancock update. Here's Adam Zucker. All right, thank you, Vern. Final seconds in East Lansing. Nebraska's Taylor Martinez comes through to Jamal Turner on second and goal. Nebraska wins it 28-24, controlling their own destiny in the Legends Division, Vern. All right, Adam, thank you. And uh, saw the pass from... Zach to uh, J.C. Copeland. Yep. A little bootleg pass. LSU is giving Alabama a taste of their medicine now. The little guy in the flat, little dink and dunk. It's almost a running game with the little bootleg passes. And a third down three now. Copeland 
with his first reception of the game. Just one more point on how Alabama has been beat. Florida, South Carolina, LSU, Auburn, and LSU. 17, 20, 20, 20, and 22 passes in those games. Wow. Mettenberger, right side, caught first down. Nick Jacobs, the second string tight end. That's only his fourth catch of the year. And they move the chain. Yeah, and good technique by Jacobs that time. He pressures up against the coverage. Mettenberger has an easy throw. He did it against a good cover guy, too, C.J. Mosley. But he came up, he broke Mosley's momentum, just kind of chest to chest, and then turned out, and the pass was right there. 12 runs for LSU, 10 passes so far. Here's a toss. Quick hitter. Big opening right side. Hill has a first down at the 47-yard line. Well, when you run the ball off tackle with a pitch, your fullback has to block people, and Copeland is on fire in the game. Coming outside and whammed inside. He's got the priest block right there. Good job. Kind of doesn't really get him. I thought it was better when I saw it. The priest was kind of out of sync. Mettenberger being chased by Milner. He tried to knock the ball loose. He does get the sack. D. Milner. Vern, that's how you lose confidence in your coaching staff calling plays. They give you a first down pass. No big deal. If it's not there, get rid of it. Don't give me second and 20. Now LSU's going to think twice before they give them that first down call. Yeah, Zach Mettenberger even told us yesterday in a brief conversation that he is still trying to earn the trust of his coaching staff. Good job by the umpire there. Some late substitutions by LSU, and he stopped the play and allowed Alabama to substitute. Second down, 19. They'll keep it on the ground. Michael Ford, number 42. And that'll bring up third and long as Adrian Hubbard, number 42, makes the tackle. Could be the final play of the first quarter. Honk if you saw this coming. LSU has run 25 plays. LSU Alabama. feels good, but yeah. Alabama has withstood the early charge as well. The end of the first quarter with a score of 3-0 will return to Tiger Stadium after this message and this word from your local station. Stadium filled to capacity, perhaps a few more than that. And at the end of one, three nothing, and uh, LSU has run more, has gained more yards than they did in the entire championship game. Third down, 13. Here's Mettenberger back. Pressure from the backside. They got the sack. That is the first of the night. Despite what we just saw, Gary, you know, you and I watched that championship game. You got a sense then that LSU was just. Yeah, no doubt about jacket. it. Yeah, they're looser tonight. That championship game in the first five series, they fumbled the snap twice, jumped off sides twice and do different series. They were a tight football team. I think the aggressive play calling right. has allowed LSU to kind of loosen up, but that sack on first down that Zach Mettenberger took really forced this punt for LSU. That was a bad mistake for Zach. And so the punt, Corey Mandel is back. I beg your pardon, Brad Wing. Ooh, that's a good one. He's had a few in his career. Woo! That was a great, great punt and a bad fair catch. Yes, yes. Well, Wing has not had the kind of year this year that he enjoyed in 11, but that was a dandy. Nice start tonight for Brad Wing, the sophomore from Melbourne, Australia. 
Boy, he had a, a night for the ages yep. last year in Tuscaloosa. He could have been the MVP of this game. I tell you, his punting bottled up LSU and kept them out of the game plan that they really wanted to run. They were forced to be more conservative in that game. And Brad Wing finished it off with this 72 yard. Remember that one where he turned the field upside down when Reed had made the fourth quarter interception against Michael Williams. Two inside the 15 tonight. That's the list from a year ago. And the backup punter for LSU is also an awesome. Yeldon, the freshman, has given Eddie Lacy a rest now. Number four, T.J. Yeldon. Yeldon goes left. When you talk to the defensive coordinators in this league, and we talked to John Chavis, he said, I know Ed Lacy is a great back and he pounds you and obviously coach Chavis right there but he said the guy that scares me is Yeldon right well he said he might John thinks Yeldon might become the best Alabama back ever now think about that's that. a mouthful just Ingram and Richardson yeah, in the exactly. last six years first down and ten Play action. McCarron lobs it out. He's got a man. This is Kelly Johnson, the H back, and that's a first down. Yeah, Kelly Johnson is the Brad Smelly of the championship game. Smelly was a fit for LSU, but if you look at him, they'll slide him out in the flat. Alabama, and actually Nick talked to us about that. We don't have a smelly type weapon that we had last year that gave us so many different options, but did a good job there of sliding him out. I wonder if Alabama will just start looking at their offensive line and say, let's pound them a little bit with Yeldon. Yes, threatened. Zone greed. Well, TJ Yeldon, true freshman. Take a look at the fellas we just mentioned. In their freshman year, Richardson in 09. 377 yards. Mark Ingram, the Heisman Trophy winner, 420 yards. Those numbers through the first eight, and you see Yeldon above 600. Second down, five. Three nothing, LSU. McCarran inside crossing pattern. That's Christian Jones, number 22. And that's another fine game. Well, this was just a little too easy. I mean, when you're playing zone defense and you give the slot this much room to throw it in, watch how open Jones is. No linebacker underneath it. That's a little too easy. You're going to have to take the short throws away from Alabama and allow the defensive ends to get pressure on the quarterback. You can't play zone, deep zone against Alabama. McCarron has hit his last three after a one of five start. Play action. Comes near side to Michael Williams, the big tight end, and he gets to the 40-yard line. Tackle made by Eric Reed, number one. Yeah, Brian Vogler ran right over the umpire in that time, and it was actually stopped in the pass round. Well, McCarron's interception streak. He's gone. Started the game with 262. Andre Woodson has the, the record, the NCAA, that's in the SEC, the NCAA record is Russell Wilson. Kobe Cameron of Louisiana Tech entered today with 335 in a row, and uh, they played this afternoon UTSA. He has the longest current streak up the middle, and uh, Cameron at 373 after that game today. That's Yeldon again. Well, just think about the assignment and the problems that any defense in college football is going to have with this Alabama football team. Two great running backs. I mean, you got Lacey, and people are arguing that Yeldon's better than him. You got perhaps an All-American quarterback, three All-Americans on the offensive line. You got a defense that stops most anything. Really, 
a tough team to try to stop. So, so many ways to beat you. So yeah. what are you complaining about? <laughs> I'd like you to go. have that. Yeah. Like First down, 10. Alabama trailing by three. Up the middle of the goal, it's Yeldon. He makes a nice cut to the left and another first down. One of the great guards in college football might be the first guard taken in the draft as Chance Wormack. Watch him number 65 fold around and get the block in the hole. Fold around, Barrett Jones block and fits right in the hole, runs right through Barrow. That's a gain of 12, another Alabama first down. They threaten for the first time in the ball game, threatened to score. First and 10 at the 22. Delayed play, not much. About three yards, maybe two. That's Yeldon again. Second down, eight. And Eddie Lacy is back on the field, number 42. Norwood and Jones, top of the screen. Ball play, Lacy. It'll be third down. Great pursuit led by Sam Montgomery. Well, that was great defense by the, you could see the speed of the LSU defense on that. They closed fast. Lacey spins, but the linebackers and the secondary, Eric Reed just closed the space quickly. What do you like here? I would hand it to my quarterback, A.J. McCarron, and say, make a good decision. Amari Cooper wide to the left. Two wide receivers come near side. Christian Jones and Kevin Norwood out of the spread on third down and six. Play action. Sidearm. Christian Jones. Oh, he got a great block. He got a terrific block. And he's ridden out of bounds for the first and goal, Alabama. He went to wide receiver slip screen on the play. Amari Cooper was the guy that got the last block to really get him outside. Watch this. I'm going to put the lineman out quickly. And as connection, good defense by Mingo to kind of slow it down. And then Cooper gets the block to spring for the first down. McCarron, one of five to start, now six of ten, and it's first and goal. Kelly Johnson is in motion. They'll keep it on the ground with Lacey, and he moves it all the way in for the touchdown. Uh, didn't even get knocked down. That was as good a drive as you'll see. Mixed up the pass and the run, but it was the power of the running backs and the offensive line that stood out to me. Ninety-two yards after the great Brad Wing punt. And Shelley is perfect this year. Thirty of thirty on extra points. He also has not missed a field goal. And he's now thirty-one of thirty-one. And Alabama has taken a lead. Well, they ran right behind Steen and Fluker this time. They went to the right side. Now let's see what happens. Kelly Johnson's in there, a stretch play, comes back and just runs through some weak tackles. Lacey reads it, cuts behind Barrett Jones too. Nice job by Barrett Jones. Lacey with 60 yards in the touch. Home Depot SEC will continue after this word from your local station. To get the latest news, analysis, and predictions from Tony Barnhart, Bruce Feldman, and other CBS Sports experts, watch College Football 360 live weekdays at 10 a.m. Eastern or on demand at cbsports.com 
slash college football 360. 11 plays, 92 yards, six minutes. Lacey now with 60 yards in the ball game, and his counterpart, Yeldon, has 40. Yeah, and Alabama's now rushed for 100 yards in the game. And, you know, that's not easy to do. They had trouble running against Alabama, excuse me, against LSU last year in the first game. The wide open attack for both teams has produced some rushing yards. Michael Ford, one of two deep men. There's Cade Foster's kick, and Ford will. Oh, my no, goodness. That's oh, a bad mistake, no, isn't it? no, no, it is. Wow. He had no momentum at all when he caught the ball. Remember, the kickoff return team is five yards closer. He took it in the end zone, and remember, the ball would have gone to the 25 yard line. No momentum at all. That is a mental mistake. But remember, Alabama had a mental mistake catching the punt. Right. And they took a 92 yards. Well, Vinny Sanceri was the man down to make the tackle. And LSU starts this drive at their own 12-yard line. Mettenberger for the day. 5 of 10, 32 yards. Jeremy Hill is the running back. That's Chase Clemon. There's play action Mettenberger. Throws it. Sliding catch by Beckham. Yes, he did make the catch. Big time throw by him. Sure was. Yep. Beckham Jr. Well, it's time to cue the duck. There he goes. Which head coach has the most wins against Nick Saban coached teams? Good count. Hill, backfield. Got him. I tell you, D, D. Milner, not only is he a cover corner, but like Drake Kirkpatrick last year, who was drafted in the first round, he against the run on that short side just beats the block to the outside and makes a picture tackle. Yeah, they lost Drake Kirkpatrick, Mark Barron. Milner has come into his own. Not that he didn't play well last year. Yeah, they had four guys taken in the top 35 from defense. Up Sean Hightower, too. That's a loss of five and a third down six. 7-11 remaining first half. Mettenberger. Another drop. That's three. Yeah, but half of this one is on Mettenberger. The receiver is expecting that ball to the outside, and his momentum was going to the sideline, and the ball was behind him. You expect him to catch it, yes, but this ball was behind the receiver and dropped. Could have had it. Uh, you know, I'm agreeing more with more with you as I watch this. Okay. <laughs> I will say he expected it in front of him, but it's definitely a catch up ball. ball. Got to look at Cyrus Jones, and now you're going to see Brad Wing with the punt. This is a line drive effort, and it's taken on one hop and bobbled. Ball's loose. Oh, another mental mistake. LSU football. Wow. I actually agree with what Cyrus Jones did, Vern. That ball would have rolled another 20 yards. It was a physical mistake, not a mental mistake. Watch, this ball was going to kick forward. You got to catch that ball. You would save your team 20 yards of field position. You just can't drop it. Sandolph recovered it. Brad Wing celebrating. And on the turnover, LSU takes over at the 32-yard line. Hill, huge hole. Great cut. My, my. Well, to run the ball against the gut of the Alabama defense, P.J. Lonergan had to get a block. He did. Watch him right in the middle, right there. Watch what he does. He takes on the nose tackle, Jesse Williams, and pins him. I'm telling you, Vern, I've watched five tapes of Alabama. No one has been blocking Jesse After Williams. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 44 on the offense, 15 yards on the end of the run, first down. Well, Les saw it, too, and he's giving yep. him an earful. Call is on J.C. Copeland, the fullback.
Connor Neighbors. Now Copeland's hearing it from one of his teammates. Yes, he is. Oh, he is. That was Terrell Simon, number 24, the cornerback, who was giving Copeland an earful. Hard to tell what happened. Oh, and, I didn't uh, see it. No, and we've been looking. Our staff down below couldn't find anything that uh, indicated the unnecessary roughness, but it has been marked back. It, 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 if we just didn't have a camera on it, LSU did not argue that it was the right call. High formation. Neighbors the fullback now. Jesse Williams gets easy, even on this one. <laughs> He got blocked on the one before. When you watch tape, you know why people don't run up the gut because of what he has been unblockable. Lonergan got him last time. This time, he got back. Second down, 10. Now Copeland getting ready to come back on the field, so penance has been played. Yeah, well, they need him. There's no doubt. They can't. They need Copeland's blocking. Hill, the running back. Incomplete. When you keep your backs and your tight end in to help the quarterback, you keep everybody in for max protection, it means you only have two guys going out for a pass. LSU keeps everybody in. At the end, Chase Clement kind of drops off his protection, but he was not one of the key players on the play. Covered well downfield. And that brings up third down 10 with LSU trailing 7-3. Look at this. No touchdowns in the last 150 minutes. Alabama has been bringing pressure. Right side caught by Landry, and then he is dumped immediately by Quentin Dial. Well, that, was a big, that was a huge penalty by LSU. It really changed the play calling. They got everybody on the LSU team looking around going, what's going on? We just had a great play. It really took away everything LSU had on that drive. And it uh, brought a sigh of relief to Cyrus Jones. Yes, it did. Fumbled the punt or muffed the punt or touched it. And Drew Aleman will try the field goal now. 47 yards, his long for the year is 44. They fake it. Yep. Left side, Alamon. I don't get it. I don't either. Well, Alabama was playing safe on the play. They dropped their players out. They know who Les Miles is. Fourth and 12 on the play. Watch Alabama drop out of the look. They've got safety, safety, safety. They are looking for the fake. Even the guys off the end do not rush to try to block the field goal. They were conceding the three points. Nico Johnson was the first one there. Cyrus Jones was the first one to say, thank you very much. Yeah, makes you want to pick your ear. Nighttime view of Baton Rouge, the athletic complex. A lot of national championships have been won on that track. The Maravich Basketball Center. And we have found the penalty on J.C. Copeland, Gary. Yeah, here he is right here. It's way behind the play. Here's the tackle over here, okay, on the play. Watch Copeland. Good call from behind. Finally found it, and that's textbook. And it begs the question, what were you thinking? A little bit too jacked up. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's just a little bit too much. And on the fake punt, Alabama stops it at the 33-yard line. They take over first down 10, 4.36 to go, first half. Hand off, Yeldon. Doesn't get a whole lot because Kevin Minter is there for another tackle. Sure did. 
You know, the style of defense that LSU plays is speed on the edges, penetrate. It's a one-gap defense, meaning they tell their defensive linemen you're responsible for one gap, and that means the linebackers have to hit it hard. Alabama plays more of a two-gap. They ask their defensive linemen to catch and protect the linebackers. Kenny Bell's in the lineup. He's in the slot, top of the screen, wears number seven, touchdown catch last week against Mississippi State of 57 yards from McCarron. McCarron looks his way and throws it a little bit behind him. Third and eight. Well, let's see if Mingo and Montgomery can make a statement in this game. Side. Incomplete. Fourth down. Nice coverage that time. LSU went with a three-man look. Dropped into zone. Forced the wide throw. I think it was Mika Eugene, number 35, that was underneath the coverage. And again, A.J. McCarron does not force the ball. It's not there. He goes, let's punt it. This game began with Alabama going three and out. That was their second three and out of the ball game. And it comes with 3.46 to go first half. Here's Mandel. Odell Beckham Jr. Whoa, whoa a Brad Wing pump right there. Ooh, Look at this my one. Goodness, yes. Yep. Out of bounds, near or inside the 10. Let's see where they spot it at the nine. And placed perfectly from the numbers to the sideline. That's a 56-yard punt. Well done, Cody Mandel. Time called. Adam, thank you, and it's time now to answer the... Come on, Duck. There you go. Slower than I remember. Which head coach has the most wins against Nick Saban coached? Teams and the answer is Tommy Tuberville. Wow, I didn't have that one. I was thinking Big Ten. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was going back to Michigan so State. You know, man. how about that? I guessed Lloyd Carr. I guessed uh, Jim Tressel, John Cooper. I had a bunch of guesses. They were all wrong. From the nine, first down. LSU. Mettenberger. Jeremy Hill is the running back very dangerous time here for LSU. They can play a little conservative. They get the ball to start the second half. Hill gets it, but doesn't get much. Gang tackling, led by Nick Perry, number 27. Let's talk about this Jesse Williams again, Vern. He is a monster at nose tackle. Everyone he faces, I watched the Michigan tape, they didn't knock him down the whole game. Watch him get inside, beats the double team, and forces Hill to bounce to the other tacklers. Well, Lonergan had his hands full then, the center. He was a defensive end right. a year ago. Yeah. Now he's moved into the nose tackle position. He seems like a better player to me. Well, how about a more valuable player? Might be a better way to put it. Spencer Ware is the uh, running back alongside Mettenberger. From the goal line, Mettenberger fires it. Oh, it's caught. That's Ware. Big gain. LSU. I'll tell you, this was poor defense by Alabama. He gets inside the linebacker on an option route. You got to force him wide. Nico Johnson lets him inside. That is a no-no. You've got help wide. The middle of the field for a linebacker is death. Great job by Ware and a good read by Mettenberger. And that's a gain of 37, the first down at the 40. One-yard line. Mettenberger right side. Got him again, Jarvis Landry. 
Well, you can see the physical ability that Mettenberger has. I mean, you know, this is a big step up coming from junior college to play in, you know, this type of competition. But his size, his arm strength, when he learns how to do it, he could be really good. 9 of 16 now. Here's Blair. Not much there, but he does get close for the first down. How about the little story that Les told us? I said, Les, I don't think you're as good as last year coming into this game. He said, maybe not, but we can be better than last year's team at the end of the season. And I think he was talking about his quarterback. Right. If the light ever goes on, he'll have that quarterback to play in the championship game. Well, those of you in the south, southeast know Mettenberger's stories from Watkin, Watkinsville, Georgia. Had some legal problems. He uh, enrolled at the University of Georgia. They uh, advised him to leave school. He spent last year, two years ago, at Butler Junior College in Kansas. This is good. And last year, I think many of us thought he would play, but he sat on the bench in large measure behind Jordan Jefferson and Jarrett Lee. His mom, Tammy, has been in the athletic office at the University of Georgia for 13 years. He said she's an administrative assistant. Actually, she's the first line of defense. Mettenberger. Nice pass protection. Nick Jacobs. That time, Zach scanned the field, and he had time to find his second or third receiver. It was Nick Jacobs. Jacobs is here. Watch Mettenberger look right. Nope, come to the middle. Double clutch and put it away from the defender. Where? Tripped up behind the line by Adrian Hubbard, number 42. Well, the big play of this drive, a 37-yard catch by Ware. And now they're trying to get into the end zone or at least on the scoreboard before halftime. Hubbard with the last tackle time called by LSU. Lots going on in college football on this uh, first weekend in November. And coming up, the Geico Halftime Report. We'll head back to the studio. Adam Zipper is sitting in for Tim Brando today, joined by Tony Barnhart and Spencer Tillman. Notre Dame escapes in three overtimes against Pittsburgh. A&M looked very impressive in their win. All the scores and the highlights coming up. And right now, third and four. LSU trailing by four with 118 to go. Three wide to the right. Beckham comes across the backfield. Straight rush. Mettenberger knocked away. Fourth down. Great closing that time by Trey DePriest, number 33, the linebacker. That ball was gunned in there by Mettenberger, and DePriest laid out. Oh, it got through, didn't it? That ball could have been caught again. Mm -hmm. I thought he knocked it down from here. I don't know if it was tipped before he got there. DePriest did not touch it, though. And that brings Aleman on. This will be from 54 yards. short and now with 108 and three timeouts and by the way I was wrong it will be Alabama's ball to start the second half so they could finish it with a field goal or a touchdown and get it oh he slipped yep well short I, you know, and that's yeah, easy to say after the fact, but I was thinking the first time he should have kicked it, the second time he should have punted it. Right. Now see what Alabama has in mind here offensively. They do have three timeouts. Hand off Lacey. First down. Help the victims of disasters like Superstorm Sandy text Red Cross to 90999 to make a $10 donation to the American Red Cross Disaster Relief Fund. CBS cares. 
Well, all of our technical and production crew, and we've got a large number of them from around the New York City area, they all made it in by various yes, manners of travel. And uh, we're so appreciative that everybody got here. Everybody is safe. A lot of damage in some areas, but we were afraid that many of them might be stuck on an island in Manhattan before. I think it's game. Eric Reed that's down yeah. there, too. At the end of the tackle, he got rolled. And, uh, the Alabama bench was telling the Alabama offense to get up to the line of scrimmage. Watch Reed. Lands on his right shoulder. I don't know if that's it or not, but he's still down. Does appear like he holds his right shoulder, doesn't it? Eric Reed, one of the stars of the LSU victory last year, had that huge interception at the goal line against Michael Williams. Eric Reed up and headed right toward the locker room. Well, he's going to sit down and get uh, a little medical attention. Here was the injury a moment ago. He was uh, favoring the right side of his chest. And remember last year, Marquise Mays tried to pass to Michael Williams. And uh, Eric Reed, number one, read it, hurried over, jumped and took the ball away from Williams. That was a huge play in what ultimately became the LSU overtime victory. Ronald Martin has taken his place. Here's Yeldon. Pumps, hit from behind. Sam Montgomery got him. But coverage played as big a part of this one as Montgomery. AJ, double hitch two or three times. Montgomery's right there. Watch him come to the outside. Runs through Lacey, runs through Quanjo, but downfield, McCarron found nobody readily open. And when he brought him down the second time, it was a sack. Well, Sam would get a little emotional on you. Time called. Seven three, Alabama leads LSU. AJ McCarron, modest numbers so far. Six of 12. Now it's time to take a look at our Home Depot tools for success. Well, sometimes the difference between your tools working perfectly or not is inches. In the first game against LSU, AJ was off by a couple of feet. In the national championship game, the tough throws, fairly well defended, but look where the ball was. The success can be feet. And tools, it can be inches. And A.J. McCarron getting ready to receive the snap. The two defensive ends had moved inside. Mingo and Montgomery screen pass. Lacey got a blocker in front. That's Barrett Jones, and they get a first down. Well, John Chavis told us they were going to try that yes. tonight. And, it, and, you know, last time it was third and long. I said Alabama loves the screen. Here's second and long. They give it to you. And now in field goal position. And still with timeouts available. They can do anything they want. Throw the ball anywhere they want on the field. Two timeouts left. McCarron out of the spread. Right side. Norwood. Another first down at the 27. Now uh, the clock will stop while they move the chain. Well, Kevin Norwood was one of those guys that had those catches in the championship game. Amari Cooper has actually burned caught twice as many passes as the next two guys combined, or more passes than the next two guys combined, but tonight it's been everybody. Four man rush, McCarron down the middle, incomplete. An interference. Yep. Flag came flying from deep in the end zone. Ronald Martin apparently will be called. Yep, Eric Reed's replacement is Ronald Martin. And the one they do, what do they do, Vern? When they reach with their left hand, what are they doing with their right hand? Holding. Grabbing them from behind. It's yep. an embrace, <laughs> as we've seen. And Hubert Owen is the uh, referee tonight. Pass interference. Defense, number 26. The ball is placed at the spot of the foul. The penalty carries an automatic first down. 
That time it was Kenny Bell coming across. You see the arm? That was really easy. Yeah, that's not an embrace. Nope. That's a takedown. Remember the long yardage pickup with the screen pass after the sack. Norwood comes near side. Williams is tight to the right. Two wide receivers split out to the left. McCarron. Coverage is good. And he finds a receiver, and the catch is made. Norwood at the nine-yard line. I thought he was throwing it away. I did, too. <laughs> I was about to compliment him on his uh, adroit play. Yes, yeah, like getting rid of it and yep. saving a play, but he, at the end of the play, he saw Norwood and dumped it off very safely again. Remember the mistake sack that Mettenberger had early? McCarron has learned not to make mistakes. Yep. Second down two, 16 seconds remaining. That's Lacey who comes to the near side, the running back. Three split wide left. Blitz from the corner, McCarron steps up, heads for the end zone, touchdown Alabama. expect McCarron to beat you running. Well, and this was not a called play. No. This was a pass play, and he adapted to the coverage. LSU was playing combo coverages, and they got burned. Shelley remains perfect for the season with extra points. Vern, watch this, what LSU was doing on this play. Three receivers here. LSU is playing four defenders. Two receivers down here, three defenders. Nobody to play the quarterback. They sell out in coverage. Nobody in the middle of the field. No spy. It's a walk-in. One of the big plays, the pass interference on Martin. The bigger play, perhaps, was the screen pass earlier in the drive. A.J. McCarron. Touchdown, Alabama. Alabama extends its lead to 11-14-3 with 11 seconds to go. Six plays, 63 yards, and McCarron caps it with a nine-yard scamper for the touchdown to make it 14 to three. Well, some questionable coaching decisions by Les Miles got his team in trouble. He took a fourth and 12, 47 yard field goal and ran a fake, didn't work. And then late in the half, a 54 yard field goal that gave Alabama a good field position. Both backfired on him. Here's Clement, the tight end. Whoa, watch out! Four seconds to go. And they'll in all likelihood have a chance to heave it toward the end zone. Now a look from our Avis action camp, Gary. Well, the All-American Barrett Jones and Anthony Steen both do their job in the middle to allow McCarron. Stunt to the left, Steen to the right, splits the two defensive tackles, and when you have no help, no linebacker, no spy, those defensive tackles must plug that quarterback run. Well, LSU will send three wide to the right, one to the left. Time for one final play on first down 10. Mettenberger hit and dropped by Xavier Dixon. time to get it to the end zone and Dixon just defeated the offensive tackle the freshman offensive tackle for the sack 14-3 Alabama Tracy is with Les Miles coach you let up a big touchdown there what was the difference on that drive um, you're talking about their drive their, their drive well they they just executed really well and that uh, you know that screen pass off the left side there uh, you know 
certainly was a uh, was a big play in that drive for them. And then, of course, that quarterback draw. I mean, we had nice coverage on the play, and the quarterback found a way. We saw a little trickery out of you on that fourth down on the field goal. Didn't come up with any yeah, points. Like I kept that one in my hat. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Uh, all right, here's an ominous note if you're an LSU fan. At the half, Nick Saban is 57 and 3 at Alabama when leading. Back to Adam Zucker in New York. All right, thanks, Vern. Coming up here on the Geico Halftime Report, Spencer, Tony, and I will have all of today's action, including number three Notre Dame surviving a post Halloween scare after this word from your local station. right before the halftime break. And so at the break, Alabama leads it 14 to three a moment ago. Tracy Wolfson with Nick Saban. Coach, with you getting the ball to start here, how important was that touchdown going into half? Oh, it was great. I mean, anytime you score right before the half, it's a big momentum boost, but we got to reestablish the tempo in the second half of what we're doing. You know, we got to fight the best fight for 60 minutes and keep punching until we can't punch anymore. This is a good team. Thanks a lot. Burn. All right, Tracy, thank you, and they will get the ball. Having won the uh, toss at the beginning of the game, deferred the option to the third quarter. And so uh, LSU will kick off. Alabama goes left to right here in the third quarter with a 14 to three lead. LSU dominated the first quarter of play, but was only able to tack on one field goal. Don't you get the feeling with Nick at halftime? He says, like I said last week and the week before and the week before and the week before, it's, it's a 60 yeah. minute game. Yeah. That's what he believes. That's what he says every halftime. It's all part of the process. <laughs> and the process works pretty well. Absolutely. Don't think scoreboard. On and on. And the kick deep into the end zone, and uh, a knee will be taken. Well, shortly before the break, Les Miles elected to have his field goal kicker try a 54-yard field goal. Right. His career long up to that point was 44. Uh, what kind of hope does LSU have now? Well, I mean, this is, uh, believe it or not, the smallest halftime lead Alabama's had this season. Right. Okay. And LSU ran, made, ran 42 plays. So if they get it into the fourth quarter, you know, could they wear Alabama down? You know, we'll have to see. I mean, you got to score first and put some pressure on Alabama. No one has been able to do it in the second half. Crimson Tide gets it at the 25 after the touchback. McCarron, 9 of 15 now after 1 of 5 start. Play action. Rolling right. Chased. Throws it away. Kevin Minter was chasing him. And the half line trends, Gary. Well, A.J. started off slowly, one for five, but he was eight for ten in his last ten passes. Lacey, again, you know, you, is, is Yeldon the best? Is Lacey the best? We do know they have a one-two punch. And you can look right there. LSU put some yards up. They yes. have to feel good. You know, I mean, they can move the ball. It's been a couple of questionable decisions, though, and what bad penalty by LSU. Lacey up the middle. There's that patented spin move. Craig lost in number six made the stop. Well, he's in the 240 pound range. He's light on his feet and he's a load when you tackle him and you really never get a clean shot because he spins off you and uses your momentum to his favor. Lacey one of six. Louisianans on the Alabama squad. He played high school ball at Dutchtown High in Geismer. It's about uh, 20 miles down. Vernon, no Eric Reed out there for the second half. And that was his teammate at the uh, guys at Dutchtown High School. Here's McCarron. Safety back tipped. 
Wow. Barkevius Mingo. And I think that saved a first down as Fluker get Mingo after the pass was deflected. It was going to be dropped off. I think it would have been a first down, and Mingo times it and swats it down. Lacey would have got that ball. He only needed four yards for a first down. See, Lacey? He would have got a first down. Mingo forces the punt. Mandel on to punt Odell Beckham. That's the third time tonight that Alabama has gone three and out. Big play by Mingo. Beckham has it at the 28. Driven out of bounds after about a five-yard gain by Bradley Silv. 42-yard punt, six on the return. And let's check in on uh, Eric Reed with Tracy Wilson. Well, guys, the LSU safety was coming out of the locker room during that last drive. I was told it is a chest contusion, specifically his pec and rib area. They did a lot of stretching at the half. They said if he can get his strength back and full range of motion, he will return. All right, Trace, thank you. First down, 10 LSU, trailing 14-3. Mettenberger in the first half, 10 of 18 for 92 yards. Jeremy Hill has had a big day, and he tries to add to his total, but Kent has trade to Priest, number 33, drove him down. Now, what are they fighting for? The SEC West has been the biggest battleground in the SEC the last few years. Alabama, 5-0. LSU 3 and 1, 7 and 1 for the season. No one can clinch tonight, but uh, the winner of this one will take a huge step toward getting to the SEC championship game in Atlanta. Second down. Hill again. And again, it's Jesse Williams not making the tackle, but causing havoc in the middle. Blocking him, he's getting penetration and opening it up for other guys. Right on the nose, center, throws away Lonergan and forces Hill to cut two times before he gets to the line of scrimmage. Well, he's, he's made, made uh, known his wishes that in conversation with media, you not ask him about his tattoos <laughs> or his Australian background. And you know what? That's fine with me. What about his haircut? Can we do uh, his haircut? Not, no, no. Whatever he wants to not talk about, <laughs> I'm cool. Third down. Mettenberger drills it. Tipped, tipped again, yes. That may have been C.J. Mosley. It was, yep. Mosley is playing a little less in this football game because he's not in against regular personnel, against all of the spread teams. You can see him making plays. Mosley comes clear across the formation, reading the quarterback's eyes and gets his left hand on it. Tremendous play by Mosley. The quarterback of that defense. And that brings on Brad Wing. Christian Jones is the deep man. Who did he ever? And it will pop into the end zone. And it'll come back to the 20. That's your average 64-yard punt. Amazing. He's got a pretty good leg. Eric Reed looks like he's gotten the okay to get back on the field. Time now for Red Lobster to present today's scholar athlete. How about that for a segue? Eric Reed, majoring in business administration and a semifinalist for the Lot Trophy. Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to LSU's General Scholarship Fund. From the 20, first down and 10. Lacey heads to the outside. Wow, Austin came flying at him. Austin and Reed are so aggressive. They play what you call a cover seven, meaning the safeties are very tight. They protect them with the uh, corners. They, it's hard to crack on them, but they read the run and they attack. They're vulnerable to the play action pass post. But remember, AJ missed that one early in the game. Yes. That's
That's a loss of six. Kenny Bell is on the field. Three receivers to the right side. So is Marvin Shin, number 80. Hand off Lacey. There's the spin. Boy, oh boy, yeah. what an effort. Mingo went all the way back to make the tackle. Let's look at his uh, package on Eddie Lacy. He does exactly what we just saw. He's running. He's turning. He's never given you a full, easy shot on him. Looks like he's a big power bat, but he runs a little more finesse than people think. And his last one was just like we showed you. He's kind of like a karate runner. Right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. he's just always turning. Hard to get your helmet and shoulder pads centered up on him. The two ends for LSU move to the two tackle spots on third and five. Mingle and Montgomery inside. McCarron. Kenny Bell, I think he should have had that. You know, on the short passes, you, as a receiver, you don't have a lot of time to react. As a quarterback, those are the ones you have to be extremely accurate with. When the ball's in the air for 10 or 12 yards, you can react to it. But here, it's hard to find the ball and impossible to catch. Yeah, yeah. Another three and out for Alabama. Uh, Alabama is now one of six on third down conversions. Yeah, the defense for LSU has teed it up for the offense. Kept them in the game. Odell Beckham is the deep man to return the punt. He has to move up. This is a short one. And a dangerous play. He grabs it and hits the turf at the 42-yard line. That one only 33 yards. Pretty good field position now for the Tigers. They trail 14-3. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Bud Light, Verizon, Cadillac, and by John Hancock. Don't forget, later in the game, the play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. A lot of time until that decision is made. 14-3 is the score right now. And Mettenberger and the Tigers at their own 42-and-a-half yard line. Russell Shepard is alongside. He ran out of this formation, a 19-yard game in the first quarter. Option, Shepard. There's C.J. Mosley to knock him out of bounds. Well, a different way to run the ball. No threat, obviously, for Mettenberger to make the big play, but a way to get the ball into the hands of one of their playmakers, Russell Shepard. Look at that. Stephen Ridley scored the last touchdown for LSU in this series. Second down eight. There's the pitch again. Oh, right through the hands of Shepard and it was ruled a lateral too. It was not ruled a forward pass. So wherever that ran out, went out of bounds, that's where the ball will be. Should have been had by the time Russell Shepard. But again, it's a play that Alabama will gladly let LSU run. Oh, yeah. Yep. Why don't you run it again? Third down and seven. Let's see if Alabama brings pressure. They've been doing it. Empty back. No, not an empty back. Here, but here they come. They're coming. And here they come. Mettenberger hit as he lets oh, it go. Great play by Mettenberger. Tackle is slipped. Cadron Boone picks up a first down. Yes. Great play by Mettenberger. He knew he was going to taste some helmet on that one. Coming from the secondary, he had to look right into it. This guy will be unblocked. He goes to the outside. I think it's D. Milner. Ha -ha Spencer, Dix. was it Ha-Ha Dix that rushed yeah. it? Into the outside, Milner was in coverage. But boy, Ha-Ha Dix was there. Spencer Ware could only take one of the two and a wonderful throw by Mettenberger. That's how you win over the staff and the team. And now they have to call a timeout. 
9-18 to go third quarter, 14-3, big play LSU just a moment ago. Gary, let's go back to the second quarter and the sequence of plays that may have altered the tenor of this game. Yeah, first Cyrus Jones makes a good strategic play to get the punt, but physically fumbles it. Big run by Jeremy Hill to set the ball inside the 15-yard line. But J.C. Copeland makes the first of two critical mistakes. Behind the play, he gets an unnecessary roughness and then a fake field goal on fourth and 12. Two missed opportunities. Since then, this is the best opportunity LSU has had on the field. And Mettenberger now 11 of 20. They'll try the uh, running play near side. Young man has some talent, Jeremy Hill. That's his uh, 15th carry, 16th for 73 yards. Sure does. Alabama bounced that play out nicely to the outside, but you can see Hill is always a threat. He's really come on, as we mentioned, in the last two games, 124 and 127, and he's got 73 tonight. Brandon Ivory's in at nose tackle for Jesse Williams. Bill. Big play on this drive was that uh, fine pass from Mettenberger to Cadron Boone under pressure from Clinton Ha Ha Dix. Ha Ha Clinton Dix. I knew if I kept playing with that name, it would come out uh, sideways. How about this? First game allowing 100 yards rushing this season. They lead it 14 to 3. Put Jesse Copeland at a fullback here, too. Are they going to run power or are they going to try to slip somebody out in the flat? They'll follow Copeland. Yes, they did. And down to the 25 yard line goes Hill. Second time in this game that on third and medium they picked up the first down. In the first quarter they did it, and now here in the third quarter. Follow Copeland. Copeland fits very well inside with Nico Johnson. First down 10. Toss. This time Hill gets to the 23 yard line. It just strikes me, Kenny Hilliard was the starter for much of the year. Alfred Blue exactly. injured. Hilliard we haven't heard from yeah, at Hilliard all Hilliard was tonight. the breakout player a year ago, yeah. remember? And uh, Alfred Blue might be back here in a week or two. Hurt in the first game. Spencer Ware has had modest carries, number of carries tonight. It's been all Hilliard. I mean, uh, and there is Spencer Ware. It's been all Hill. Well, one of the strengths of this LSU team back in August when all the uh, folks were wearing in. Look at the uh, leading rusher, Hilliard, then Blue. That's when he got hurt. Then Hilliard, Ware, Shepard in the win over Towson. Florida, it was Ware, and then the last two, South Carolina and the Aggies. 124 and 127. In this situation, Alabama comes back in with Jesse Williams, a better pass rusher. This is a definite passing situation. Nick Saban's calling timeout. Did he get it? Yes, he did. That will leave both teams with two. 6.20 to go in the third. We'll be right back. After missing all of last season and being released by Indianapolis, a rejuvenated Peyton Manning has bounced back with the Broncos and is having an MVP caliber season. Shannon Sharp sits down with Peyton as they discuss his comeback season, his health, and the Broncos' Super Bowl chances. That's tomorrow on the NFL Today. This uh, wonderful athletic complex at Louisiana State University and the focal point of which is this facility, Tiger Stadium. Death Valley, 89th year. We're going to increase the capacity next season to over 100,000. Oh, my goodness. Beckham on third down. 
See, that's what the big arm does right there. The big arm quarterback, there's not a lot of guys that have played against Alabama that can throw from this hash and gun it to the outside over there and put it right on Odell Beckham for the first down. Vinny Sinceri was there, but boy, that throw was a rope to the sideline. At a first down, Mettenberger now you see 117 yards. Copeland in the I formation will lead Hill if they choose to hand it off. No, they give it to the big fullback, Copeland. That's 270 pounds going north. And Mick Perry. Well, LSU, the Verizon Red Zone stats. Touchdowns in the red zone, 47%. Not terribly effective. And defensively, Alabama has been superb. Learn just to let you know what LSU is doing and whether they're going to wear down Alabama. Alabama has been averaging 58 plays by the opponent per game. LSU has already got 55. Wow. Left side. Hill. There's 56. First mm. team that's ever really been able to put this on Alabama and actually turn the play tables. Remember we talked about the formula against Alabama. You must be able to run the ball. You right. cannot finesse Alabama. And they have run for 118 yards now on the season. Alabama yielding only 57 yards per game. And LSU is three of three on third downs. Here's a big one. Play action. Mettenberger got him. Nope. Flag down. Oh, my gosh. The play was stopped before the snap. Come on. Made the catch wide open. Before the snap. False start on the offense, number 33. All the other players never got sent before the snap. Five yard penalty, still third down. They called it on Jeremy Hill coming out in motion. I don't know if he was supposed to continue his motion, but he was not set for one second. Watch Jeremy Hill come out from the tailback spot. I really don't get it. He was in motion. He was going sideline. I think they blew it. I don't get that one at all. Penalty back. It's third and seven. Mettenberger drills it. He's got Jarvis Landry. Did he get in, or is he stopped just short? He's short, but it's a first down. It's a first down and goal. Well, this is what LSU thought they had in Mettenberger, a guy who could pick up third down plays with his arm. They could not do this in the national championship game. They did not do it because of a couple of early interceptions in the first game. But tonight, Mettenberger has given LSU another weapon. And can they end the touchdown drought against Alabama? They'll give it to Hill, and they just have. point. Nice hold. Kick is up and good. Well, ironically, that touchdown was scored on the 58th offensive play of the game, which is what Alabama has been facing on an average for the whole season. This was, again, power right off tackle. Right behind Turner and Alexander and Copeland. Two freshmen and a senior.
335 to go third quarter. 14-10. Alabama still leads, but only by four. Welcome back to Tiger Stadium, Death Valley, Saturday night, where Les Miles is 36 and 1. The only loss uh, was to top ranked Florida 13 to 3 in 2010. And they've climbed back to within four now. They are a perfect four of four third downs on that touchdown drive onside kick. Who got it? LSU, did it go far enough? Well, Alamond's got the ball in his hands, or Hairston, rather. Did he touch it early, though? That's the question. I think he touched it before it went 10 yards. That is the discussion. I just love it when teams have two kickers with number 30. Really makes it so easy. Still talking about it. Remember, it has to go past the 45-yard line before they can be touched. The ruling is that the kicking team illegally touched the football prior to it going 10 yards. The Alabama's ball at the spot of illegal touching, first down. Let's take a look. Here's the onside kick. Tops it. Could not tell from that no, look. No. Can't tell from that look either. The play is under review. Jim Allison is the replay official tonight. It's the next line now. See if he touches it before he gets to the line. He does. That's a good call. So the officials got that one right. And, you know, going back to the play before the big first down play, during the commercial, I think we found what the call was. The line has to be set before the player can go in motion. The line is not set, and when the player goes in motion, that's why you can't have two people in motion at the same time. So actually, officials were two for two on the big calls. And let's look at the attempted onside kick from a high angle. I think they did get it right, absolutely. Look at the 45, and he touched it at about the 44 and a half. Right. From this view, you don't know if it hits his helmet, but when you put it together with the other close view, you know it does. Yeah. Remember, from this view, you see that the ball is touched. Right? Right there. there. From the high view, you see the line, and you know it's before he got to the 45-yard line. So Les makes another gamble, and it doesn't work. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Alabama ball first out. You know what's kind of also happened here, Vern, is this delay and review is kind of helping the Alabama defense. Mm -hmm. They were wearing down, and now there's been time and Alabama needs to make a couple first downs to help them more. They have two three and outs in this half. And T.J. Yeldon, the freshman, is the running back. On first down from the 44 with a four-point lead. Yeldon to the left. Ridden down at the 40-yard line. Craig Lawston, who has made a habit tonight of flying through the air and making contact, and there's a player down at the 36. It is Lawston. Well, Eric Reed's on the sideline, one starting safety. Craig Lawston, the other starting safety, might join him. And it almost looks like the same type of injury, doesn't it? Yes. Remember Eric Reed falling like this? This time it appears 
Did somebody land on it? It might have been its own guy with a, more of a leg injury. Yes, it was. I think it was Ronald Martin fell on him as Lawson was spinning. So now we're down to the number three and four safety for LSU. Will Alabama test them? Remember how Florida tested the linebackers for LSU? Oh, yes. Corey Thompson, number 12 is on the field. I don't know that he expected to be playing in this kind of situation. I didn't. I don't have him on my board. But there you are. Second down and six. Yeldon gets a block on the edge. Gets a block downfield from Norwood. First the tight end and then the wide receiver. And he's got a 22-yard gain. So did DJ Fluker, too, number 76. The power, Michael Williams and Fluker. And following number 31, Kelly Johnson. Fluker gets a great block. Williams gets a great block. And Yeldon, with those quick feet, gets into the secondary. Boston out for one play, back on the field. First down and 10, 14-10. 235 to go, third quarter. Yeldon, the running back. Kelly Johnson goes in motion to the left. Nice stutter step and a spin move. He learned that from Lacey. Sure did. Benny Logan that time, defensive tackle, penetrated number 18. Yes, defensive tackle. Has the honor of wearing that number. Makes good penetration inside and then... Yeldon does one of those, as Vern called it, and Eddie Lacy spin. There's number 18, beats Chance Womack, Womack, and gets positive yards. Second down, five. Williams sets up the left side. Norwood, top of the screen. Looks like LSU might have something in mind about aggressive attack here. Cut back to the 10. It'll be third down. Anthony Johnson, number 90, makes the stop. Hairston in agony. Tried the onside kick, touched it, half yard too soon. Alabama is one out of six on third downs in this ballgame. Marvin Shin, Christian Jones, wide to the left, timeout called. by L-S-U. And by L-E-S, too. LSU has used another timeout. They have one remaining. And another look at the onside kick attempted. Hairston touched it. And just a moment ago, his reaction on the bench, ouch. You know, the ball actually did take kind of a bad hop. Mm -hmm. it, it, it kind of bounced back into him. And if it had kept going forward, I think he would have had the play. Third down three. Mingo urging the crowd to increase the noise level. Yeldon, the running back. It's Christian Jones in motion. Fumble. Oh, fumble. He fumbled it. Yes, he did. And Alabama was not taking a risk. They wanted either a first down or a field goal. They play it conservative, and it's a poor handoff by A.J. McCarron. He did not get that in the center. It was on the hip. You've got to get that into the middle. The running back is not looking at the ball. He's trusting that the quarterback puts it in the center in the stomach. That one was on A.J., not the freshman. Sam Montgomery recovered, comes up with the ball. That's the second Alabama turnover. LSU has kept it flawless. McCarron at fault with the attempted handoff. And the ball goes over at the 10-yard line. Hill, about three. Vern, I think A.J.
CJ was trying to be a little fancy in his ball handling, trying to fake the reverse as he handed off. Let's see if he does that. See, he's reaching for the reverse yeah. to hold players over here and really never look the ball in. He had Christian Jones. Take a look at this season versus last when they lost only four. Second down, seven, 14 10, nearing the end of quarter number three. Odell Beckham. Play action. Got him. Flip it out. Got him. Did they ever? It's Copeland. Copeland. championship becomes a fourth quarter game of all of the unlikely pass receivers a 270 pound fullback who just made his second catch of the year 42 yards hang on Welcome you back to the fourth quarter, Tiger Stadium, Death Valley, on a Saturday night. We begin the fourth with a four-point edge. Alabama holds on to a 14-10 lead, but a huge fumble recovery by Sam Montgomery, an equally large pass, and now on first down 10, backs in the eye. Jarvis Landry sets up to the right. Play action, Mettenberger looks downfield, drills it, and it is incomplete. Well, Mr. Danielson, fourth time two top five teams have met here. These two guys are worthy of this ranking. Um, this is why you come to games at night in, in, in Death Valley, right? Because you know the pride in this football game. This team got beat, embarrassed in the national championship. And now not only the LSU fans on the edge of the seat, but there's some Notre Dame fans, some Kansas State fans, Oregon some fans. Oregon fans yeah, yeah. that are all in this game now they're all pulling against Alabama you got to be honest they all want Alabama to lose second down and 10 blitz Mettenberger stands in caught Cajun Boone it'll be another big third down well Zach Mettenberger has showed up in the second half he was four for five going into this drive. Now he's five, two, one for two in this drive. Both throws were good. I mean, put it in a spot where his receiver could get it or nobody else. As Les told us, I know my team up to this point has not been as good as last year, but we can be better because of number eight. And Alabama's going to earn this win here in Death Valley. Third down, seven. Blitz from the side, Mettenberger under pressure. It is caught. This is Jarvis Landry. The blitz came from the field, but it's a zone blitz. And if you don't get to the quarterback, you've got a safety covering. Coming from there, number six again. Uh, Clinton Dix a step late. And Vidi Sinceri cannot make the play. When you do the zone blitz, there's not a lot of guys back there. You're giving them space in exchange for an extra rusher. Toss, right side. Down to the 14-yard line goes Hill. Tiger Stadium, a brand new attendance record, by the way. In this 89th year of the stadium, of course, there have been expansions. It's 14-10. LSU had an early lead of 3-0, two unanswered by Alabama. The last right before the half. 
And then Les Miles rolled the dice on a couple of plays, came up short, but uh, a fumble recovery at the nine yard line, a big, big pass play to J.C. Copeland. And now LSU threatened to take the lead. It's into the corner. Touchdown Landry. Making a cell phone call. We were told that Alabama students, a la Florida's Tim Tebow, had gotten hold of his cell phone number this week. Right, but he better be careful and concentrate on playing quarterback. I got gotcha. you. LSU leads by three. This is always a challenge for a great defense. Sometimes the offense is just better than you. Deion Blue, number 13, has man-to-man -man coverage. Can't throw it any better than this. Zip, it's out. Look where it's placed. Perfect. No chance. The fade, and he goes up and gets it at the highest point. I don't care how good you play man-to-man -man coverage. You can't stop that play. Seven plays, 90 yards to 308. A 42-yard pass and a 14-yard pass for the touchdown. And now it's time for our Geico Game Recap. Take you through this one. Opening uh, score of the game, Aleman. A 38-yard field goal, LSU up by three. Then two second-quarter touchdowns. The first came from Eddie Lacy as he plunged in to put Alabama on top. And then just before the half, McCarron found his way up the middle, scampered in for a touchdown. It was 14-3 at the half. Here's Jeremy Hill with his touchdown to make it 14-10. And then a 90-yard drive ending with this perfectly executed pass from Mettenberger to Landry. Well, you saw, you saw a brief, brief signal from Mettenberger. And he could have got flagged for that. We've seen it before. No, he was just... Uh, that's, that's I know, fine. I know. It, it, it wasn't the players. I'd be concentrating. You got a chance to win the national championship. Hairston will kick off. Christian Jones, one of the two deep men. Short kick taken at the 18 yard line. That's Xavier Dixon, a linebacker, who did not expect, I think, to be returning a kickoff. Now let's go to the studio for this Heisman Watch presented by Nissan. Here's Adam Zucker. All right, thanks, Vern. Uh, Xavier Dixon probably won't win the Heisman, but how about Kenyon Barner, a school record 321 yards as Oregon beats USC 62 to 51. Also some big numbers for dark horses, a quarterback, Aaron Murray with four touchdowns, and Taj Boyd with five, also ran for one, Vern. All right, Adam, thank you. 17-14 here. Three series, three and out, three and out, and a fumble. In this half. McCarron batted down. Benny Logan, number 18. Sooner or later, to win a championship, your quarterback has to come through. Greg McElroy did it. Remember it gets Auburn. Sure do. Now, A.J. McCarron is behind in the fourth quarter. He can't just dink and dunk and take, take sacks. He's going to have to throw the ball and take some risk with the football. Lacey, huge third down coming up. Benny Logan, Sam Montgomery. Lacey limps off. Yeldon comes on. 
Third and ten. Alabama's one of seven third down conversions. Will they go three and out again? Yes. Never threw it. Intercepted. Uh -uh. No, nope, no, nope, trapped. Nope, nope. Trapped. Eric nope. Reed. Had him wide open, too. Yep. Marvin Shin coming across. Got him wide open. Just outreach. And it's skipped before Reed can get it. Cody Mandel is on to punt. Another three and out for Alabama, the defending national champions. The pressure always finds the quarterback, doesn't it? Yeah. Sooner or later. Pretty low punt, returnable. Comes right. Beckham. Ball down from behind. Danae Patrick, number 11. That's a 45-yard punt, 10 on the return. Time has been called. Getting a little tense. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by New York Life Insurance Company. The Home Depot. Chick-fil-A. And by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. wonder if that same moon is as visible over New York tonight. Let's go back to the studio for this John Hancock update. Here's Adam Zucker. Thank you, Vern. It would be. we got to take the roof off, though, to see it. How about the number two team in the BCS standings? John Hubert of Kansas State. Two touchdowns to break open what was a tight game against Oklahoma State. They lead by 17 now with under nine to go in Little Manhattan. Back to you, sir. All righty. 11.51 to go here. First down 10. LSU took the lead after a fumble recovery at the 10-yard line. That was a mixed... Uh, yep, a self-inflicted, wasn't it? Yes, it was. And uh, LSU has not turned the ball over tonight. Mettenberg has hit seven of his last, last eight passes, and that'll be a flag as Lael Collins, the left guard. Yeah, and, and that's how, what they did in the championship game, jumping off sides and making it first and 15. They've been picking up yardage by not Offense. making mistakes. Number seven. Five yards from the previous spot. Still first down. Time is penalized. Five yards for a full start. Still first down. First and 15. There you go. My gracious. Number of plays. Remember, team's been averaging 58 for the game. The only other team that went above 300 yards, guess, against Alabama, Georgia Southern. First time it's happened since that encounter. J.C. Copeland, nothing. Adrian Hubbard made the tackle. Second down, 16. For the season, 203 yards, number one in the country. And 333 given up by Alabama tonight. Second down, 16. Beckham and Boone on this side, play action. Mettenberger fires it wide open. Beckham down the sidelines, caught from behind. They gouged him again. Beautifully designed play. This is the area that they're going to throw the ball into. They get the receiver right there. One guy goes, fakes deep, and gets it right into the open area. And protection against the Alabama pass rush. That was long yardage, too. You betcha. Alabama's had a long second on the screen pass that they picked up. And Mettenberger, the light may be going on. First down 10. He's thrown for 245 now. Here's Hill. Closing.
closing in on his third consecutive 100 yard game. Deion Blue made the stop. The only loss on Saturday night at home came against number one Florida, 13 to three. That was in 09. Was that the uh, Tebow concussion game, basically? Mm, yes, yes, it was. Yeah. Yes, it was. Second down and eight. Under 10 to play. Play action again. Mettenberger chased, fires, got it. Jarvis Landry. Well, wow. it's going to be third and short. And basically, this is another story of the football game. Opponents against Alabama, as you look at this play action pass, came into this game, Vern, converting one out of four. In this game, LSU is over 50%. They're eight out of 15, while Alabama is one for eight. Right. It's the story of the game. At the 25, third down two. Didn't get it. No, and sure. will Les roll the dice? Because a field goal makes it a six-point game. It's a good yard. It's a long yard. Well, I, I know you and I, the back of our minds at least, remember Florida, LSU here, 07. He went for it five times They're on gonna fourth go down. Cat. They're going to go wild. And cat. it's going to be Spencer Ware. Yes, they are. And he's going under center. I don't know. Uh, I don't either. Let's see what kind I of spot don't think he got. So. Nick Saban thinks that they held him. Spencer Ware under center. Now watch the spot. They try to follow number 44, Copeland, but I think the play was made. Was it 47, Xavier Dixon, that made the stop? No, 57, 57 DJ Pettaway. Was it? Was it? It was 57. Pettaway. What a play. Now hold your breath if you're an Alabama fan or an LSU fan for this measurement. Well, I thought they had to get it to the next yard line. I thought it was it short by a half yard. We're about to find out. At least. Oh, wow. Yeah, at least. They actually didn't even get an inch on the play. Well, Les has rolled the dice four times. He's 0 for 4. However, it, it appeared that Spencer Ware fumbled that snap, too. Did not catch it cleanly. Yes, he did bobble it, didn't he? Yep. 0 for 4, however, his aggressiveness has kind of transcended to his team. So 0 for 4 decisions, but his team is playing hard. We ask you to help the victims of disasters like Superstorm Sandy. Text Red Cross to 90999 to make a $10 donation to the American Red Cross Disaster Relief Fund. CBS cares. Well, 841 to go. You know what Les needed on that? He needed Jacob Hester. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> we all were in somewhere in our in our in the back of our minds thinking about that LSU Florida game here. When Les went for it five times on fourth down and converted all five, including the winning touchdown with Jacob Hester. McCarron has missed his last five passes. And they've had four series in the second half. Three three and outs and a fumble at the end of the drive to kill points. T.J. Yeldon is the running back. That's Norwood in motion. LSU might be coming from the quarter. They are not. Here's McCarron. Incomplete. Oh, no. It is incomplete. Okay, now. I'll tell you, the Alabama bench thinks he caught it. 
but of course they would. Obviously, it could be reviewed to the outside. Kevin Norwood, perfectly thrown ball. They were making these catches in the national championship. Was the ball by? Oh, yes, that's yeah, easy, that's easy call. Right. So McCarron now 0 for 6. Nice job by Jalen Mills on that play, too, coming in and stripping that ball loose because his foot was in. Green right side. Quick tackle right side. It was caught by Marvin Shin. And Jalen Mills, number 28, was right there. Yeah. As you look at Alabama's possession chart, we just talked about it. They've had four series, three three and outs, and a fumble. And that was actually the right call. Jalen Mills with back to back championship plays. He strips the ball, he makes the tackle. Who needs Maurice Claiborne? One for eight on third down. <laughs> One for nine. Yep. Sam Montgomery was shadowing him. Well, this obviously was great coverage in the secondary. Receiver blanketed over the middle that time. Great job by Jalen Mills again. Nobody to go to. Jalen Mills, the go-to guy on three straight plays, and he wins three straight times. And it's another three and out for the number one team in the country. Mandel will punt. Clock beginning to become an issue. 7.27 remaining. Not sure what this conversation uh, involves. Alabama can only probably hope to get the ball two more possessions. Please reset the game clock to seven minutes, 42 seconds. they're going to get is two more possessions in the regular unless there's a turnover on an early down but they can only count on probably two more possessions in regulation Notre Dame wins in three overtimes today they're still undefeated Oregon wins by one against Southern Cal they're still undefeated Kansas State winning big they're still undefeated Oh, what a punt. Mandel. Beckham. Fair catch. 54-yard punt. Jalen Mills. Been a star in the last 10 minutes of this game. So is Sam Montgomery. 20 to go in the game. Go back over this series, Gary. Big plays in the fourth quarter between these two. It always does. Okay, remember Chad Jones get the sack and the fumble. Rashard Johnson with the interception. Remember the interception that wasn't by Patrick Peterson. The big sack and fumble by Greg McElroy. What will happen this year? And of course, Eric Reed's last year in this football game in the fourth quarter. Who will make the big play in the fourth quarter this time? I go back to the top of our telecast when you said at the very end of our on-camera comments, Mettenberger's got to come up big. He's hit nine of his last ten. He's played superbly. Tonight. Absolutely. You're not going to beat Alabama with what I call ten and a half men, meaning you can't manage your quarterback. you got to play with a guy who's going to willing to throw the ball. He's had moderate numbers all year, but he has been terrific tonight. Here's Hill.
And he's tackled by D. Milner. Passing tonight. Play action. Fake the toss. Fires it out. Diving try. Nope. Incomplete. Ball was put in a good spot, though, and great coverage by Dion Blue. The Alabama defense needs to do what LSU did force a three and out. The LSU defense has stepped up and met the challenge. Will Alabama get a stop? Remember in this game. 50% of the time, 8 out of 16 times, LSU is converting a third down. Can this Alabama defense get a stop on third down? Third and six here. Three wides to the right. Blitz, Mettenberger lets it go. Caught Jarvis Landry. First down. Inside slot coming across, but this blitz, they're disguising it. It's taking too long to get there. Mettenberger has time to let it go, and he carves up inside against Nick Perry. Well, that blitz has not worked. It worked early a few times, but the LSU offensive line, running backs, and Mettenberger has carved up the blitz. Spencer Ware in the backfield now. Clamal, there's the toss to Ware, goes right, nope. Whoa, wait, wait a minute, a missed tackle. Milner, first one there, and then Ed Stinson. Under six to go. It's a tired Alabama football team. You can just see it. Their legs are dead. 75 plays. That's what happens when you can't get a stop on third down. Michael Ford is the running back for LSU. Five and a half to go. Ford gets it, doesn't get a whole lot. But that clock inexorably winding down. LSU has only the one timeout left. Alabama has two remaining. The defending national champions, led by Nick Saban. Well, what do you do if you're LSU? What do you do if you're Alabama? The delayed blitz has not worked. Okay. Will LSU throw it again? 14 passes, three rushes tonight, and they are 9 of 17 on third down conversions. It's third and six here. No blitz. Mettenberger out of the backfield. Jeremy Hill, another conversion. Tackled too late by Nico Johnson. Yep. The perfect matchup. Mettenberger is on his game. He's going to the right guy again. There's the matchup. The best one on the field. A linebacker against a running back. No help. Remember, Nico was beat inside before. This time, Hill fakes inside. And a perfect throw from the LSU quarterback. Surging forward. Third consecutive game in excess of 100 yards for the freshman. With Alabama only having two timeouts, I believe if they can get the ball back, they will go into four down offense. They cannot take a chance of punting the ball again in this football game. I never dreamed, Gary, we would see. If I guess if any team would go over 400, it might be LSU, but not based on what they've done offensively this year. And they had 413 yards in this ball, ball game. Was that ball on the ground? Or was that ball play stopped before the play started? 
It was Copeland tackled Before the by snap, Xavier Dixon. Before the start on the offense. On the level to not get set prior to the snap. Five yards, second down. Best penalty of the game for LSU. A bad break for Alabama. Because that ball was on the ground. Yes. I think it's this guy moved. Didn't see didn't it. Didn't look like didn't it. Didn't see it, did it? I didn't see who. Somebody must have flinched inside. I did not see it on that one. We'll take another look. 323 remaining in the ball game. I wonder if it was the same penalty. Two people in motion again. Play action. Mettenberger, right side. Got a man open. Caught. Odell Beckham, huge play. Mettenberger's doing exactly to Alabama what A.J. McCarron did to LSU. Putting that ball in a spot where only his receiver can get it. Beckham, who had dropped throughout the year. Look at this. Great coverage. Only one guy could get it. Deion Blue, again, in position. But it's almost a mirror image of what LSU had happened to them in the championship. Look at that control of the football. Look at that emotion on the sideline. 2.45 to go. Mettenberger, seven yards shy of a 300-yard effort. Hands it off. Copeland. Timeout. Yeah, I thought they'd better start using him. Alabama calls time. Having fun yet? Let's go back, Vern, to the play before the pass. Remember, Alabama had the football. The thing was stopped. Same thing happens. LSU doesn't get set before Jeremy Hill goes in motion or the back goes in motion. See, they're not set for a second. The back goes in motion. They stop it right there. It's a procedure penalty on LSU. This will be the 10th play of the drive. LSU has held the ball on this drive for four minutes and 46 seconds. 2.34 to go. Hill. Jesse Williams, first man there. Alabama should take a timeout. Yeah, they do. Good strategy. You can control the clock better on offense. You can't let LSU bleed another 40 seconds off the clock. They are out of timeouts now. Three-point game. Tigers lead. Current BCS top 10. Look at all the zeros on the right side. One of them might be changed in the next two and a half minutes. Kansas State just won. Big decision for LSU. Remember, a field goal does not ice the game. Alabama would... If you run the ball, however, it takes 40 seconds off the clock. Right. So that's the decision Les has to make. Does he hand it to his quarterback and say, make another throw? Or does he run the ball and try to kick a somewhat, might be a 50-yard field goal? Both tight ends tied to the left. Toss, Hill, fourth down. It will be about a 45-yard field goal. LSU will run the clock all the way down to one second and then take a timeout and then decide. You got to kick the field goal. I mean, you have to force Alabama yeah. to score a touchdown. Eighteen seconds remaining in the play clock. So it'll be about 138 
when uh, Miles calls timeout. Remember the penalty, the best penalty of the LSU season. Two guys in motion, the play is killed. It would have been Alabama ball and about with about four minutes to go in the game. After that, Zach Mettenberger hits the big pass. Well, he promised to be aggressive tonight. He's made some big decisions. This one, yeah. Right. And then they tried a 54-yard field goal, came up about 10 yards short. Alamon's career long. Here's Hairston with the onside kick touched nine and a half yards before. And then on fourth down, Spencer Ware went for it. None of them have worked. But look at the scoreboard. Yep. They've got a hot quarterback, though, don't they? Oh, my goodness. So fourth down. I've been saying all year that you must have, you know, when they lose, they get a hot quarterback that you tip your hat to. Steven Garcia has that type of game a few years ago. Tebow had it. 45-yarder. This would be a career long for Alamon. Previous career long, 44. Wing will hold it. Drifted. No. Drifted. Alabama can get a tie with a field goal. Touchdown obviously wins. Just kept moving left out. Yeah, it sure did. Well, Alabama has a chance now, but I must tell you, based on their performance in the second half, I don't know how you can be very optimistic. They've not done anything with the football in this half. McCarron is one for seven for zero yards. 94 seconds to go. Both teams out of timeouts. Right side, got it. That's a pretty good way to start, isn't it? Norwood. Well, first of all, you depend on your offensive line. You say, guys, we've got all Americans, all SEC players, give us time. Then you tell AJ, one of those games you gotta win it for us. Back to throw again, back foot, got a man open, it's Norwood again. And that stops the clock as he stepped out of bounds. A gain of 15. And how quickly two plays and put Alabama in a position to kick a field goal. They need 10 more yards. They've got Cade Foster is their long field goal kicker. He's four of eight. Their short field goal kicker, Jeremy Shelley, is perfect for the year. Yeldon is in there. It's first and ten. McCarron got a man. Diving catch. Yes. It's Norwood for the third play in a row. Well, remember how tight the LSU defenders were playing on the last drive. Now they're giving so much space. You got guys that time it was Jalen Collins, number 32, giving 10-yard cushion. McCarron goes for it all. Deep in the end zone, tangle, and incomplete intended for Norwood. Yep, incidental that time. Feet got tangled. Micah Eugene was defending. It'll be second down. Trip over each other. And the Alabama offensive line have kept Mingo and Montgomery from making an impact so far. Second down 10. If they kicked it now for the tie, it would be 45 yards. Blitz, screen pass, Yeldon. 
to the 20, to the 10. Touchdown, Alabama! The blitz and the screen. He answered. Sooner or later was going to go to number 10, and he answered. That's Mark Ingram, isn't it? Yes, it is. Until that drive, McCarron was one for seven in this half for no to, yards. Give it to everybody, though. Yeah. Total yeah. offense. The offensive line protected him. The receivers came up with some great catches. A offensive coordinator, Doug Nussmeyer, makes the great call on the screen. It was a total team getting that last drive. And I thought LSU until this play was too passive. Yep. And the screen worked in the first half to set up a touchdown. And the screen with under a minute to go produces another touchdown. Zach Mettenberger, your turn. wins a championship without one of these games. Yes, you're right. You're right. Every championship team has had one of them. McCarron was four for five on that drive. Yeldon got the touchdown on the screen. 72 yards after the missed field goal. Yeldon, 28 yards on the screen pass, and now Zach Mettenberger, your, your serve. And I don't think Alabama will blitz him. So Mettenberger has to try to get the ball at least to about the 40, 50 yard line and then see at the clock how much time is left and what he has to go from there. James Hairston, the kickoff specialist. Just like, now not as much time, obviously. No timeouts. Probably each throw has to be past the first down marker. Any throw short of a first down marker or doesn't get out of bounds could be the game. Foster's kick. Half of his kicks have been touchbacks. This one is not. Michael Ford. Traffic down at the 20. So with 45 seconds left and no timeouts remaining, Mettenberger comes on 22 of 33 for 293 tonight. We talked about it in the fourth quarter. Someone always makes a play. This time, A.J. McCarron, who's never been in that situation in his career, drove him down. First down 10 at the 20. Alabama going three-man, playing a yep. back eight soft zone. Mettenberger finds Hill. See, that's the dangerous drop-off because that eats up too much clock. 30 seconds to go. You got to throw for first downs or the sideline. Three-man rush again. Shovel it out. Hill trying to get outside and does not. Nope. He does not. 13 seconds to go. Hill's hurt. No timeouts remaining. And a very emotional A.J. McCarron on the bench. He knew sooner or later he'd have to make those tough throws. Ten seconds to go. Got him. Damian Square, number 92. And unbelievably... A.J. McCarron leads his team to a come-from-behind victory. Zach Mettenberger, valiant, valiant in defeat. And Alabama played the strategy perfectly, took the timeouts when they needed to, knew they had a four-down drive, and look at the emotions. Alabama 
Oklahoma's rich history. Name it. Stabler, Bart Starr, none of them have ever been national champions twice. A.J. McCarron has the chance to do it. And he's kept that chance alive with a brilliant performance on the last drive, and Nick Saban is with Tracy. Well, first, you knew this one would be a challenge. What can you say about the way your team stepped up when their backs were against the wall? You know, what we talked to our team about is that we would have to overcome adversity in this game. So when the things went bad and they went sideways, you know, we kept saying to them, we got to overcome adversity now. But, you know, LSU played a tremendous game. They really outplayed us. We had a tough time stopping them. They did a great job offensively of attacking us and hey AJ did a great job on the drive we make some big plays and it's a great win man great win well speaking of AJ congratulations it was a struggle there throughout the game and obviously you're very emotional explain how hard this was for you I mean it's extremely hard but I got the best teammates in the world the best O line I mean the best defense the best coaches and everybody fought, and that's what Coach said. He always preached a 60-minute ball game, and everybody hung in, and, I mean, it was an unbelievable win. Well, congratulations. Enjoy it. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Wow. And now it's time for the play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. It just might involve that man and a screen pass. And with the call, here's Eli Gold, our old friend from the Alabama Radio Network. Yold in the running back. Norwood in motion. AJ gets the snap. Pressure. Screen. Yeld 30. 25. Make a man miss. Right. He's gonna go. He's yes. Go. He's gonna go. Touchdown. TJ Yeldon. Vinny Sanceri helping AJ McCarran. How about that? One of seven, and here he goes into the stands. at the game. I talked to AJ before the game. My gosh. Let's take a look at the player of the game presented by Russell Athletic. The freshman TJ Yeldon. 11 rushes. 76 yards, only one reception, but it will go down in Alabama lore. 28 yards on a screen pass as LSU elected to blitz. And McCarron, look at Yeldon set up. And a perfect call by the Alabama staff. Remember, LSU could have played a little safer, forced the field goal. No guarantee Alabama's going to make a field goal, right? We've nope. seen that before. Absolutely. But they were aggressive all night, and they were aggressive on that play, and they got burned. So I get asked periodically, do you really like college football? <laughs> <laughs> who, who wouldn't? What a game. And thanks to all of our crew who overcame some obstacles, all of those from New York. We wish you well on your trips back home, and we will see you next week. For Tracy Wolfson, Gary Danielson, our whole crew here in the booth, what a night. Goodbye.